We are in the pre-kunj, uh, the kunj before the kunj, <laughs> in Vrindavan, live. So that's exciting because Gurudev had, has a meeting. He has uh, allowed us to use his pre-kunj. <laughs> and um, we wanted to repeat the verse from this morning because it was quite inspiring and i will read the the verse and then we can continue and i ha i ask our uh brother charanji to help me when i recap yes <laughs> you were there <laughs> i don't know this word recap what is this thing? recap means uh Memorize what we spoke this morning, what we heard this morning, the main points, also what Damodar spoke and Gurudev spoke. It was very nice, deep points. Okay, I will try. <laughs> <Yes. I can. laughs> My capacity not so like Damodar, but I will try. So it's a Vinapa Kushmanjali verse thirty-five. Oh Krisho Dari, slender girl. Your waist is so thin that I'm very much afraid that it will break when I bind it with a new golden string shining with tassels as, at both ends. Is it uh, audible? Is it okay now from the sound? The singing is very loud, isn't it? So there he says, yeah. Yes, sound of kitten is uh, very loud, yeah. The kirtan is too loud. So how about when I speak like this? What about So Devi says yes. Uh, yes, that is perfect. Okay, let's do it like this. Or oh, should we come to the basement, Radha Charan? No, it's okay, huh? Because the kids are there, no? They are doing computer class, I heard. Yes. Even, even in this case, it's a more, how to say, no. more, yes. more good than... But when you no. okay, then we just speak like this again. Oh, Krisho, Dari, slender girl, your waist is so thin that I'm very much afraid that it will break when I bind it with a new golden string shining with tassels at both ends. Bodhasuna has also come. Come this closer. <laughs> so this is a very, very deep verse. And I would start from the beginning because now Gurudev is not here. And then I will just try to make the paragraphs summarize them a little bit they understand because it's yeah we have the sound check that's before you came in the previous verse Chiragunath hung the shamantaka jewel around swamini's neck and when this vision disappears he laments when will you give me your personal service Suddenly, the vision of his devotional service returns. And after hanging the Shamantaka jewel, he sees himself hanging a golden sash around Swamini's waist with tassels on both ends. Ai, Krishodari, slender girl, when will I very fearfully hang this string? around your waist afraid that your waist will break i will hang the string around it thus to bind, bind it up so in this vision shri raghunathas as tulsi mandari is binding shrimati radhika's waist means she is decorating the waist with a very beautiful string 
a golden string shining and that has at the end tassels in german we say uh sagt man auf deutsch tassels das sind so puschel puschel <laughs> Ja, so Quasten. Quasten. And it look mic uh, if so they forget uh, switch on mic it can be oh, but, the mic. but I I can see your mic is uh, open. So, and I like the commentary that our Damoda from Russia gave. He explained that when Tulsi is seeing this, she is standing behind Swamini. Like you can imagine, standing behind somebody's waist, and then she's holding Swamini's waist. And we were discussing this point that holding the waist and binding it with that beautiful string makes her a little bit fearful because she feels protective of Swamini. She has this love protection feeling. And that's why she feels, my God, Swamini is so skinny, so thin. When she runs to meet her beloved, I might, you know, I have to protect her. I have to hold her, her waist. So maybe you also have had this feeling when we are walking here with Gurudev sometimes in the Parikrama in Munge Mandir. Also, he is walking very slowly. And I even know something like, like this feeling that, oh my God, I hope that Gurudev will not triple. I have to catch him. <laughs> I have to hold him. That is somehow a ridiculous feeling because I am in a very small body and Gurudev has a very big, big body, big king-like body, but still the feeling is there. And Damodar Prabhu was explaining very nicely the other day that if we love someone, these feelings, they come. Even though Swamini's waist will not break, but the feeling is there for the for the manjari. I hope she will not, you know, break. So that is very beautiful. And this fear is also there, the fear of the beloved. When you love someone, you're always worried that nothing will happen to them. Just like when our Guru Asuna was in the taxi yesterday, <laughs> then Gurudev is calling, are you okay? Is everything okay? Suniti, you have to find out the taxi driver's number. <laughs> are you in a, uh, is, is the traffic okay? So that is a natural, even like Batsalya Bhav oriented feeling. And we have heard that also the Manjaris, they have also parental feeling for Swamini in their love. They always want to protect her. They always want to make sure that she is comfortable, that she has gotten Mohan's prashad. These feelings are there naturally in the hearts of the Manjaris. Because love gives you that. Love gives you the need to know that your beloved is safe. Isn't yes, it? yes. This is our dear Chaitanya Prem from Australia. Australia. <laughs> The the love makes you feel all different different feelings. Sometimes like a mother, sometimes like a father, sometimes like a friend giving advice. Always thinking how to serve Swamini and how to be close to her. Be very close that even if she has to run fast. I want to be like her shadow and hold her 
in case she might triple. Aye, Krishu Dari, slender girl. When will I very fearfully hang the string around your waist? Afraid that your waist will break, I will hang the string around it just to bind it up. So that's another uh, contradiction because the string can also not hold the waist together. <laughs> the string is only a decoration. But that is the feeling. So we were discussing in our small circle here how the feelings will give different, different ideas and different uh, thoughts. The Mahajana sing. Her waist is more thin. <laughs> Wait, I have to. Her waist is more thin than that of a lion, and it can be held even with a fist. One can never serve God with love unless one knows the desires on his mind. We must get some impulse from him, therefore. On the strength of his love and devotion, the curtain of God's mind will open for the devotee, and he can see what is the Lord's desire. So that was also a very good, uh, how do you say, stimuli, the idea that the mind is like a curtain, and even that will open from within to have a meditation, how I can serve. So, and that is to know the desires of Swamini. Hey, Rade, Tarun Baba. We are today in the outskirts of Gurudev's room. <laughs> Sorry, it's so loud here in the background, but I hope you can still hear me. Yeah, yeah. We try to get the sound down. They sometimes they, they put it up. But they're having a meeting in there with Gurudev, and let's see, maybe after we can come in again. So how glorious is then the kinkari or the kinkaris who are dedicated to the service of the full Madana Mahabhav, supreme love personified, Srimati Radhika. Yes. I want to share something. Here, the uh, feeling of Tulsi Manjari is fear. Yes. See? She has fear for Srimati Radhika because she is a Manju, very tender girl, and she wants to protect her. And um, if such fear not coming, this means no such relationship. And this is not reason to, how to say, to feel guilty, I'm wrong. No, it does mean, it is mean what in this moment you are not in Swarupa. <laughs> because it's it's written Kinkari they are glorious by Soren Mahabhava with all these feelings, with great feelings Mahabhava, they come in there in Saru it could not come from uh, sea on this hill from far away time to time demons, great demons coming to Vrindavan and sometimes they are attacking Srimati Radhika and if I will be far away from this reading book or hearing. For me, it's not so serious. Or just story. Krishna is God, Shimati Radhika is goddess. It's just a funny thing now happening. But if I will be aware as your kinkari, not as outsider, and look, I will also feel fear for my Shimati Radhika so much. It's not uh, reasoning. I'm trying to say what this this, this by mercy Shmati Radhika, I mean, this feeling is coming just by Shmati Radhika's mercy. Then she 
taken by hand to Manzari. Then, I'm by my own efforts can uh, produce this fear. <laughs> it's not possible. And how uh, it's possible gradually, gradually, by mercy of Shimadradika, then someone, how, how Gurdev told to me, he asked me, please explain this line in Vilapkus Manjale. When she uh, went to Lucy Manjari, seated at Lotus Feet of Shimati Radhika. And I told few words and started to read the uh, next uh, sentence. But he stopped me and told, don't run from here, Lotus Feet. Stay where? Just try to see it. What does it mean? Sit at Lotus Feet of Shimati Radhika. How is she looking at you? What's the aroma coming from her? What you're feeling there? Try to be aware. What kind of ornaments on her uh, toys? Toys. Mm -hmm. Toys. It is like a lot of petals. How beautiful here, a lot of seed. They light it. And they are very soft and cool. How, how you can serve this lotus seed? Like this, gradually, gradually coming close. It's not possible like this. I can feel, I can feel this fear. Not possible. It's gradual. First, some attachment must come. Oh, I am here, Krishna Radhika. This feeling. Not to see Manjari. I am sitting where? I am sitting where? That's always. Yeah, that's the... That's the personal, how do you say, approach to check myself also. Now, how far am I away and how close can I get in my meditation? That is, is actually our homework. Gurde calls it homework, right? And that is also like Baba says that on the strength of his love and devotion, the curtain of God's mind will open for the devotees and he can see what is the Lord's desire. So that is also happening by mercy again, that we are coming closer and closer in our meditation on Swamini, perceiving her fragrance, her eyes, her form, the guna, rupa, and lila, different, different qualities in smaran, in remembering Shrimati Radhika. And once I asked Gurdiv, well, how to do it, this smaran, how to, you know, go ahead with it? And he said, yeah, whatever we listen in the mornings, for example, or we are reading, just during the day, we are remembering it. And we try to absorb, according to our capacity, these feelings and these visions or these remembrances of the Leela or what we have heard in the class to meditate on this while chanting, while doing our house duties, our jobs. Just try to keep it in the mind and keep it in the heart as much as possible and float in it. Gurudev calls it floating. And the other day, we were also in such a kind of meditation. It was a meditation about Radha and Krishna being together and how they would feel. And Gurudev said, no, 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 don't float so much in that direction. We always float in the direction only of how Swamini feels. Not even how Radha and Krishna together feel. But how Swamini feels, he always puts us back in this one-pointed 
line of thoughts or line of feelings and i like it very much because then i can also observe myself how my meditation my smaran is you know floating or not whether it's stuck or in which direction it's floating that is um, to do when we hear these things or when we discuss these things to find out also where am i you know how is my smaran going is there anything or am i just you know floating in my own world <laughs> so to say which is mostly the case you know to be honest but at least to try to go in that direction to try to remember and to float according to my ability capacity or mercy or desire so krishna himself worships prema divine love therefore he is also subdued by shri radhika's maid servants that is their full pride and glory Krishna worships Prema, Shrimati Radhika, and therefore, because he worships her, and Shrimati Radhika is again under the control also of the service of her dasis, that even they also could subside Krishna. They can also tell him, "No, don't come in." Or now you have to do that. Now you have to chant Radha's name if you want to come closer to her again. That is the glories of the maid servants. Oh yeah, now comes a nice paragraph. Very interesting about the Koma Kriti. I think Gora has not been successful. <laughs> So, Krishna worships divine frame, divine love. Therefore, he is also subdued by Sri Radhika's maidservants. That is their full pride and glory. Krishna became Gora to taste the love that Radhika feels for him. And after he had experienced that, he also wanted to taste the nectar of the Kinkari's service. While he relished the mood of the mandaris, the Lord's body became formed like a turtle, or sometimes his limbs would loosen and stretch out. Rade, Rade. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how ours, but for me, and what I, I learned from Rasika Vaishnavas, from Srila Gurudev, the principle in uh, Lila, in Rasa, is must increase. The sweetness must, must increase. The sweetness, oh, okay, yes. <laughs> and here it's written, and then this Babaji Maharaj wrote, first, Mahaprabhu enjoyed by the mood of Srimati Radhika. And then, on the peak, on the top, he started to enjoy the mood of Manjaris. The sweetest. Yeah. The sweetest he is safe for the end. <laughs> yes, that's a, like in a great meal. No? Some people, they like to eat the sweets in the end also. <laughs> in a big sabshi, it's nice. But if you get after sabshi, the Shrikant, my God, then it's the top, the highest of the highest. <laughs> So also Chaitanya, he had this experience of feeling the mandri's feeling, the mandri bath. And as we know, he didn't only feel it, but he also distributes it still till today. And then we had also a very beautiful meditation that I remember that Damuda gave again. He said, why turtle? Why is it the picture or the example of a turtle? And I really liked his meditation that he shared. He said, it's a golden turtle. 
The turtle is an animal that takes all the senses inside. All the limbs go inside and it is covered under that shell, a strong shell. So also Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was becoming a kinkari in his meditations, in his visions, in his experiences of Radha Bhav, he became so stunned, so much love was floating in him that he became a turtle which shows that all his senses became like one pointed and the turtle is also an animal that is very uh, it has a big shell so nobody can disturb it this golden shell is also like the the covering or the you know, the, you say, it's keeping the meditation one pointed in that case. So also we have heard many times that to withdraw the external senses and bring them inside is the way or the, you know, I you say, recommendation to go deeper and deeper and deeper. And that picture it never came to me, but when I heard it from Damodar, from his uh, feelings, it made me very much appreciate the Kumakriti meditation about how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in his highest feelings of becoming, you know, a manjri in the Leela of Radha and Krishna, he became like a turtle. Yes, Radhachara, please. The different avatars, uh, they can't, how to say it, I don't know how to, in English, they are deities of particular bhavas, moods. For example, Nrisimha is the deity of Patsalya. Kurma is a deity of Sthai Bhava. Stabil yeah, right, yeah, that point, yeah, that point came, yes. Thank you. Staiba, yeah, now you remind me. Yes, please, you explain, Radha Charan. And uh, this is mean when we're meditating on Mahaprabhu in Mandari Bhava, which is, um, how to say, expansion of Shimati Radhika's mood. It's Shimati Radhika's mood, Mandari Bhava. These are so much. Uh, Shmatiratika has two elements, Ananda and Rati. Please so much blissfulness and passion, desire. And someone must control, otherwise everything can be uncontrolled. Means um, it can be chaotic. Shmatiratika couldn't take care about so many things. She is in Mila, in her, in her Bhavas. And this is Manjari is doing. They are, even they feel what she is feeling, but they have this capacity to not come out of uh, their desire of service. It's like, it's like, like very strong uh, shores or bank of river. Even the river is so strong, but the shores keep this river in form. And he told, Mahaprabhu, in this form of Kurma Kriti, uh, giving with food, if someone meditating on this form of Mahaprabhu, he received this capacity of Manjari, in spite of big Ananda, and question desire, to be strong in fixation, or uh, to serve Shumatradika in any case. Yes, the Stai Bhav is the Kurma Kriti, the panzer, in German we say panzer, ne? in English I didn't find a better word than shell. It makes, yes it is shell, it makes a strong, you know, protection and all the senses are inside, means externally we we try to withdraw the the, the 
material senses and we try to go into our spiritual meditations and even Mahaprabhu, his body became formed like a turtle and sometimes his limbs would loosen and stretch out. And then in Chaitanya Chaitamrita, Mahaprabhu's mad words are described when he came out, out of his turtle form, Goma Kriti. Today I went to Govardhan Hill, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, to see if Krishna was tending the cows there, climbing on Govardhan Hill. Krishna played his flute, surrounded by the cows. Hearing the flute song, Shrimati Radhika came there. Oh, Saki, I cannot describe her form and mood. Krishna took Radha by the hand and entered a cave with her, while the Sakis told me to pick some flowers for the service of Sri Radha Mohan. The Sakis are asking the Kinkaris to pick flowers. Here it is clear that Mahaprabhu finally came to relish the mood of the spiritual maidservants, the mandris in the pinnacle of his ecstatic absorption. Suniti. Yes. <laughs> One thing came in my mind. Dora escaped the whole magic here. Uh, I mean, madness. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I asked this uh, Pujari ji for reducing the sound, noise, but uh, he don't know how. Okay, so okay. he decided to enter the room. <laughs> no problem. Um, yes. This morning we also uh, spoke about Radhika's man, right? Yes. And so we can, we could also understand that she uh, is uh, is this turtle, a golden turtle, what the Damodha explained, because all her spiritual senses, when she is in man, are inside. She is not showing this, and Mahaprabhu is in the same mood when he become like a turtle. He is uh, putting all his spiritual senses. There is no need to uh, under pressure any material senses because in Mahaprabhu, he is uh, actually in Mahabhav. But uh, when he put all his uh, spiritual senses inside, that means he is in Man. He is not showing any moving. And this is the same situation when uh, Swamini is um, just in front of the uh, Kunja and suddenly enter, change the mood and she's becoming man. So all her senses are inside, not, uh, uh, not relishing uh, our, our Mohan. But then by a thunder we read, at the same moment, she fell in the arms of Mohan. Then all the senses are, where, are there. So the golden turtle, we could also understand like, uh, uh, like this, that she is covering her spiritual senses when she is in Man. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for adding this because the yeah the mood of Mahaprabhu, of course, is not to be compared with any worldly, you know, like us being trying to withdraw the senses from the sense objects. And then also Mahaprabhu told his devotees in half external consciousness means he was half in his you know meditation and half with the devotees seeing the Yamuna river I went to Vrindavan where I saw the prince of Braj Krishna playing in the water with Sri Radhika and the gopis having great fun I stayed on the shore with the other sakis 
while one sake showed this pastime to the others. Here again, Mahaprabhu explains that he did not play an active role in Krishna's pastimes, but he or she in this case was relishing a service position like that of the Mandaris, witnessing the sweet pastimes without taking active part in them. Chaitanya Chaitamrita then says, Apani Kori Ashwadana Shikailo Bhaktagane. Whatever he himself came to relish, he taught this to his devotees. Radhe Radhe. Um, Manjari is not active, they proactive. <laughs> <laughs> proactive. And this proactivity come from the how to say position of viewer. Viewer. They completely absorb in her moods in such a way what they can see uh, the future pictures, what will be uh, what will be very soon. And they can prepare all these levels. If he couldn't see this uh, uh, future, how he can prepare, how he can serve. <laughs> this means proactive. <laughs> They're not just active, they proactive. Very nice. Yeah, that is the point. They are not actively taking part, and Mahaprabhu is confirming it here, saying that, yeah, we are sawing them, and then uh, we saw them, and I want, I pick flowers or whatever. The, the, the Sakis told me to, to pick flowers, and uh, always waiting for the next chance to be in service. So maybe. I think also the Manjaris are proactive because they're in tune with Radharani's feelings and Radharani's emotions. So they feel what, 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 what Radharani feels. Needs. So they can immediately respond. They don't need to be reactive because they feel it at the time that Radharani feels it. So they can be proactive. Wow. Yes. Actually, yes. Tinker is yeah. proactive. Yes. yes. <coughs> Marani, can yeah. you move this? Screen? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. I also remember the oh. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the king. Okay, then I think you. Actually, the kinkaris they are proactive, and the mancharis are active or reactive when um, Radharani says what she wants. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference between the kinkari and Daddy. Yes. Just just mentioned this they know. Yeah, that's great. Yes, that is a fine tuning that we are getting here in Rindavan by Gurudev's grace. He's not speaking so much anymore, although yesterday evening we had a nice exception. He was teaching all his grandchildren about the supremacy of Krishna, how he is the supreme and the other, you know, how to understand the other demigods and goddesses. And then he was showing the universal cosmic Vedic cosmology and then he was speaking so much. But usually he with us, he's just listening, relishing and once in a while adding some sprinkles, drops of mercy. One can never understand the flavors of Raja while remaining in a mundane consciousness. And the devotees who take shelter of Sriman Mahaprabhu's lotus feet are the suitable candidates for relishing these flavors. <laughs> To relish the sweetness of the love in Raja. That it? No. <laughs> There's so much going on, you won't believe. But I find this is also a challenge to become one pointed now. To relish the sweetness of the love in Vrindavan, one must give up the attitude of awe and reverence towards God. That was also a nice point that Gurudev made in front of Ayush and Ayan and uh, Anya. 
Aishvaya, and what's her brother's name? I forgot. I uh, yeah that. Ayan, Ayan, Ayan. No, Ayan is in it is Aryan. Yes, Aryan. They have all the A names. <laughs> He made the point that Krishna, why he is the supreme? Because he does have nothing to do. Everything is going on under his control in his uh, manifestations. But he himself can play as he wants to play. That is the sign of God. And Gurudev gave this example of the big boss of the Tata company. You know, Tata is that Indian big big industrial company they make airplanes they make cars they do many many things and they are the number one industrial company here in india and he says if you want to find the boss you have to go a long way and he says sometimes the people in the offices they have a manager who is the head of the company but he is not the boss of the bosses. He is only the manager of one department head of a department. But for those people who work under him or her, they think they are the boss. But actually the boss is the one who is sitting somewhere and enjoying. He doesn't have to be, you know, in all the details of the company. And that makes sense, right? And you cannot just, if you, if you have a big uh, house or a big company, then you cannot just walk in there and say, I want to speak to Mr. Tata or Mrs. Tata. <laughs> that is not possible. You have to build up a relation by service. You have to work yourself up. <laughs> And then maybe one day you will not uh, meet them. So the same with Krishna. There are many, many uh, other, you know, demigods. There's Shiva and Gurudev said, if you read the Shiva Pur Puranas, then they will say Shiva is the supreme. If you read the Durga Puranas, they will say that Durga is the supreme. But that is also the confusion of all the scriptures. You will never find exactly what is the deepest understanding if you don't have a teacher to help you to find out, you know, all the tattvas and all the understanding how it goes together. That was very interesting to Gurudev because his uh, grandchildren were starting to speak and then uh, his daughter said, the youngest, she said, but Dadu, but Grandpa, Krishna is a manifestation of Vishnu. He is the eighth manifestation. No? Is, that's what all the Puranas, I'm reading the Puranas. And then Gurudev freaked out. <laughs> yes, yes. I made research. She was telling Gurudev. I made research. All the Puranas, they say that Krishna is a manifestation or incarnation of Vishnu. And then Gurudev said, Ari, what do you say here? <laughs> Why you not ask me? <laughs> Are there others? Yes, yes, Saru Baba. <laughs> Suniti, Suniti, therefore, therefore, it's so important that we always have this beneficial uh, uh, viewpoint of Sriman Mahaprabhu, who always said that the Srimad Bhagavatam is the, the Alpha and the Omega. So whenever this confusion is coming up, I had a, a very wonderful talk yesterday with Guru Kripa and Narayani. We were talking about the Bhagavatam and they had so many questions and Always we can find out that when we read Bhagavatam, when you read the first candle, you read that Krishna, this all these confusions, they are completely finished when you always take shelter of the Bhagavatam, like Baba is doing, like Srila Narayan Maharaj has been doing, like Srila Prabhupada has been doing. So this, this, con this confusion is very easily dispelled if we always have take shelter. Therefore Mahaprabhu said everything is in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So I was reading the, the first candle and in the first candle it immediately comes this, uh, you know, uh, Sadhu Sangha, uh, Shraddha Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya Nishta. And mm -hmm. you can see that Rupa Goswami Ji, he perfectly followed Bhagavatam because this is in the very beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam. The process of Bhakti is outlined. 
and who is the supreme personality of godhead is outlined and all these things are there who is shrimati radhika and therefore it's so important that we like you said we always have guru and we have sadhu and we have shastra and this holy trinity it should always be in in unison and uh, this is so wonderful that we have this mm -hmm. otherwise we would be really really confused and this is also the great mercy you know another point we were we were, we were speaking about which would refer to like chaitanya dev so nice to see you chaitanya dev after so many years man <laughs> so, so wonderful so nice to see you after so many years Hello, it's um, been three years. Yes, Heidelberg, Heidelberg, my God. Heidelberg Bakta. And I'm Chaitanya true. Prem now, Kavadi. Yeah, I know, Chaitanya yeah. Prem, I know. <laughs> I know. Um, um, before you said that, like Chaitanya Prem, he said that we have the, the manjaris, they are always in fine tune with Swamini. So we were talking about this yesterday also. So. The question was, uh, uh, it was a, a point that what happens when Guru is leaving the planet? You know, when like my Guru Dev, he left the planet. So how can we still be connected with with the Guru and how can we still connect it with the, the other world, so to say? And therefore, Srila mm -hmm. Sadhumaraj, last time he gave this beautiful example, we were also talking about, we have to do, this is our job to, to find the frequency um, like in my case, when I when I go into meditation and I try to to have a good consciousness, it is very important that we focus on this this very beautiful frequency of his name as a manjari form and uh, of the information we get. And we need to connect with this frequency. Otherwise, it will never work. Only when we connect to the frequency, then we mm -hmm. can receive this information. And the same happens with the Manjaris and Swamini. And our part then would be to, to have such a good consciousness in Bhajan that we can follow along. Otherwise, this means we have to be really fixed in our stai bhav. So otherwise, we cannot receive this fine tuning. We cannot have this connection to this uh, Manjari bhav. It's not possible if we have not the same frequency. So therefore, it's so important to 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 find the information who are you what is my spiritual name what is my spiritual form and what is what is the other one so that we can tune in in this frequency otherwise it's just a nebulous speculation yes yes, yes go but would i like to add something also to that um one pointedness it is not that the scriptures are not right. When they say, when you read this Purana, then maybe Shiva is the, the, the highest. And if we read others, then this is the highest, Vishnu, whatever. This is not that, it's, uh, that it is wrong. This is also true. It depends on your goal. If you are like to become a Shiva Bhakta, then your goal is Shiva. And uh, that is a relationship you have to enter in this. If you like to be everybody's darling, you will going nowhere. The jack of all. So, because of this, of the goal and the relationship, you have to, to fix your, yourself in one point. If you like to go to Shiva Loka, okay, no problem. You will get it if you are one-pointed. We, we read this, uh, what is it? Bhagavatamritam no? of Gop Kumar. He is explaining all these uh, different lokas. And it depends on our desire, where is our goal? But if we fix our goal in Vrindavan, there we, we cannot, uh, what to say, uh, uh, fix our mind to Shiva only. I mean, he is the gate, gatekeeper, but 
if we like to enter as a servant of Radhika, we have to meditate on a Manjari, to be Manjari. So this is the scriptures are right under all circumstances. It depends on our point of view and our goal and then of our relationship. I see there is a there is uh, something going on in Vrindavan. Gurudev's room is overfloating with uh, uh, uncounted uh, 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 people are going in and out. It's unbelievable that this is only uh, 15 square meters. I think it has to be 100 and more square meters that all these people can enter there. <laughs> and they all cross. <laughs> they all cross the class of uh, uh, Suniti and Chaitanya. <laughs> we are so fortunate that we are in Vrindavan. We take all and the... In the background, the, and then the background there is the full sound of, of, the, uh, of the kirtan. This is a very funny all scene. All mercy. <laughs> Yeah, that is uh, really a big important point. How we get the guidance of of Guru, it's depending on also which direction we go. And we yeah. see Guru and everywhere. That, and, that, and that the scriptures are true, even if they show different goals. That's not that is there is only one goal. No, we have uh, to decide which goal we like to walk. We cannot reach every goal there. Yes, we have to have a good navigation. Yeah, if we like to go uh, Shiva Loka, I think uh, this place in Prindav, Munga Mani, is, is maybe not the right place. <laughs> yes, Gurudev also said to his uh, granddaughter that she was more focused on the material planets and then on the Vishnu Logas and then Gurdiv explained to her, yeah, when you want to stay in the Gunas, then these uh, realms are very important. But we are, we are trying to understand how to get out of the Gunas, how to get out of the cycle of birth and death and how to come to our eternal position. So that was also a very uh, good point that she was then also taking in for all of us. We were just the viewers to digest what is our goal and how to reach it. And I was just amazed that, uh, you know, these grandchildren, they have been coming and going for 20 years now here in Munge, Raj Mandir. We have seen them crawling around, playing around, you know enjoying here having parties and now about the age of 20 as we also remember in our childhood in our youth the questions come about what is the you know highest knowledge or who am i why am i here and at one point also gurudev said to his granddaughter you have not come for this no and then i saw he was speaking to that spiritual soul you know you have come why have you taken birth in this family? Why have you, you know, this connection to Vrindavan? And why am I your grandfather? Gurudev didn't express it, but just that one sentence, you have not come for this, makes me feel that he's talking to all of us personally. Why have you come? You have not come for, you know, trying to enjoy anymore or trying to understand this Purana and that Purana. Actually, you have taken birth at this time because you want to go to the final destination now and take the chance. I am not your, your loving grandfather that you can hug like a teddy bear only. I am also a teacher. <laughs> you know? That was so uh, so sweet to watch and so touching for me because I also know them now from childhood. Now here they are. And then Gurudev says, bring the bring that poster, bring that poster. <laughs> and then we were going through all the different 
planets and the destination of the soul and what is the difference of the material planets and the spiritual planets and we were all listening here Guru becoming the teacher the spiritual guide consciously this time for his grandchildren okay to rel rel relish the sweetness of the love in braja one must give up the attitude of raw awe and reverence towards god vrindavan is the kingdom of sweetness and the upasana subject of worship and meditation of braja rasa is a sweet upasana in which we want to see krishna as a lokic Sad Sorry, Radha, Radha, my dear Suniti, please a little slowly. So Devi is uh, say to to us li a little slowly, not too not too far, not too. Okay, again then. I hope you have a book there in German. <laughs> yes. Okay, good. I get it. Yes, yes. Uh, slowly, very slowly. To relish the sweetness of the love in Braja, one must give up the attitude of awe and reverence towards God. Vrindavan is the kingdom of sweetness and the upasana, the subject of worship and meditation of Rajarasa is a sweet upasana in which we want to see Krishna as a lokic satvandu, a good worldly friend. Now comes the point that we have been talking. That's how the supreme kingdom of sweetness is a sweet upasana, where Krishna is a good friend and Srimati Radhika is our Swamini and friend. Of course, Srimati Radhika's ways will not break so soon, but out of great, unadulterated love for her Swamini, Tulasi is afraid that it will. What does love seek? Only the happiness of its object. Only the lovers can make the beloved happy. And the lovers think, may you be happy. So, Shimati Radhika, we had this point before. A waist will not break, a body will not break, it cannot break because it's such ananda, it's pure consciousness, it's made out of frame. But because the upasana or meditation of Vrindavan is about sweetness and human-like feelings, we get this feeling. The mandris get this feeling. And that is the nature of Vrindavan, the sweetness of the human feelings or human-like. And that is also what love is seeking, what love is about. It's not about my own happiness, it's about others' happiness. How to see others happy, how to serve others, and how to relish the happiness of the beloved. In Germany also, we have, there is a saying that love multiplies if you divide it, or it's international maybe. So this is the mood of Vrindavan. Always the mantris, they are wanting to make Shrimati Radhika happy to have her meet her beloved, to have her remember Mohan. The love of Vrindavan is as pure as molten gold, and there is not even a whiff 
of personal happiness there in the hearts of these devotees. In Sri Radha's mood, Shriman Mahaprabhu says, Krishna Mara Jivana, Krishna Mara Pranadana, Krishna Mara Pranera Parana, Vidaya Upare Daron, Seva Kari Sukhikara, E Mara Sada. Krishna is my life. Krishna is the treasure of my life. And Krishna is the life of my life. I keep him on my heart and I make him happy with my service. I always meditate on this. So we can also feel that this verse is giving the most evidence how Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is more to be seen as Shri or even in the service like a kinkari to enter into our Manjari bar of Upasana. And this is the third quote now from Chaitanya Charitamrita where this is proven, where Mahaprabhu is singing in the mood of Sri Radha. Krishna is my life, Krishna is the treasure of my life, and Krishna is the life of my life. And Gurudev gave the example, why would Krishna sing this about himself? That doesn't make any sense, right? If we see Mahaprabhu mainly as Krishna, he would not sing this about himself. There is no pleasure in that. And I remember when I came to the movement of Krishna consciousness, when I started to try to understand the feelings and the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and maybe you also remember that we were taught that Chaitanya is a devotee who came to show the love of God. And then nowadays I think, well, that is somewhat true, but it's not the full truth. It is a very actually uh, covered, you know, understanding. Because now that we have the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we can feel that, my God, it's, it's Radha's mood, it's Radha's love. And Krishna is expressing that with his own words. And in that mood, in Radha Rani's feelings, he is singing this song. My happiness lies in service, and his happiness lies in intimate pastimes. So I give my body to him. Krishna makes me his concert and tells me, You are the queen of my heart. But I just consider. But there you can see, Suniti. Yes. Mahaprabhu is switching in his mood. He, sometimes we have to understand when he is in Manjari mood. And when he is switched in Radhika's mood, that to understand in the Chaitanya Chaitanya, no? sometimes it's very close, and we have to meditate on the topic. What? Who is speaking? Right. It is a different mood. It is a different feeling. And when I read this verse the other day, then I said to Gurudev, this is the eighth verse of Shikshashtakam. This refers to that feeling. When Mahaprabhu is saying, Lashlishya vapada ratan vinastumam adashana mama atam parotupa. I am your maidservant, whether you embrace me or not, 
I will always be your servant. I will never give up my position. Even if you sport with others in front of me. Right, Tarun Baba? <laughs> I think I think this is a very important point. We all have been growing up, every one of us, that Mahaprabhu is, is more or less Krishna, but we never we never really understood or, or realized that also he is the combined mood. So he has the bhav of Swamini. And when he when he saw the Yamuna, when he saw the mountains, and when he was in the mood of the Manjaris, when he were near, when he was near Govarda, so this is Achindya Beda Beda Tattva. We cannot really understand this. What is he feeling? So it's, it's not an, it's not our position to understand what mood is he in. We can only like Gora, Gora Sundara said. Sometimes we see signs of that mood. Sometimes we see signs of that mood. But fact is that he definitely definitely has both in 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 him and and mostly we focus as radhas nehadika mantri bhav sadakas we focus on the mood of swamini when he is expressing that mood and and like you said sunidhi what is the zenith of the shikshastakam the zenith is that one one single moment is like 100 years and this pain of separation and this wonderful wonderful uh, expression when he had that mood so this is what we focus on. This is the mood of the of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas who are in Manjari Bhav. This separation from Krishna, and we help Swamini. We help our Swamini to meet Krishna, and thereby we are fulfilling actually the the, the gift of Mahaprabhu, which was never given before. When we facilitate that meeting of of Swamini and Mohan, we are in the in the right place. We are in the right stay Bhav. And we try to to assimilate our 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 bath, our inner mood as good as it gets. I mean, in the material world, we can only get as good as it gets. But we can try with the with the with the mercy of our Gurudev, as as good as it gets. We can fine tune ourselves, and we can listen to the lilas. We can meditate on the lilas. We can try to be within the lilas and then engulf ourselves with that feeling and with these feelings and focus more and more that Mahaprabhu also came to share Radhika's mood. Definitely, 100%. Otherwise, he would not end his Shikshasta come like that. And uh, Baba, this, uh, <clears throat> Krishna was also there, but he was not real present. When... Uh, when he once he called his chakra, you remember, no? When uh, when this both uh, uh, what is the name of this uh, uh, chakra and my life? Chaka yes, and my life. When, when they uh, uh, um, make a um, stone or whatever <laughs> on the head of Nitai. <laughs> so then uh, immediately. Chaitanya uh, uh, got, came in the in the mood of, of Krishna and called his chakra. So there is also Krishna, but is not real present. It is there, but actually this Krishna came. How Nitai explain? You come to realize the sweetness of uh, Swamini and of the Manjari. No, so three persons. Nade, is it on now or off? Yeah, yeah, the best off. Nade, sorry, it's too much commotion here. You cannot imagine we are tested in really coma city today. I I cannot believe that you are uh, steady there. This place, it's like in the entrance of a a, a, a railroad train, uh, station, train. Uh, many train station, and many people come out and in, and you give class. I'm not giving class, I'm just reading. I'm not doing nothing. I'm it's just... one of those times where you're wondering where the mercy is. <laughs> <laughs> mercy is in continuation. <laughs> but uh, with the help of all of you, we will satisfy Guru and that will be our happiness, right?
Ja, ja, ja. <laughs> the maid servants just meditate on the pleasure of the Yugala Kishore. Sri Radhika and Sri Krishna have given themselves to each other and left all responsibilities for the arrangement of their loving affairs to the Sakis and the Mandaris. The playful Sri Yugala has taken shelter of them. That is also a very sweet point. I love this point. The playful Sri Yugala has taken shelter of them. Like Radha and Mohan, they are also playing, you know, this Leela of, let's say, Parakya Bhav. They are experiencing it. That is for true. But we also know that it is a special bath in the spiritual realm, a very high, elevated, you know, expression of divine love that is accessible to us right now in this Kali Yoga to serve this divine love. But they are playful. They are playful. In the middle of all this craziness, Around us, we also have to be playful. <laughs> it's only a game. It's a play. But Radha and Mohan are also playing in that that play, that parakia bath, that, you know, we have to hide it, we want to meet, we cannot meet, and all of this gives the chance that Gurudev has explained so many times for us to enter and to do uh, any service. Gurudev has explained many times that in other realms of the spiritual world, Radha and Krishna are also married. But when a couple is married, then everything is kind of settled. There is no need for helpers. They have their house. They have their home. They will meet wherever they like to meet and they don't need uh, these helpers for the secret meetings because there is no secret meetings. But here Baba is saying the playful Sri Yugala has taken shelter of them. And also Gurudev yesterday explained that again our uh, Kama Gayatri Mantra meditation and the Diksha Mantras and he explained that to his grandchildren because some of them also had gotten already the Diksha Malas. Yes. Yes. They had, I didn't even know, Gurudev is so merciful. They have given, they had gotten these mantras from him. And so again, again they explained, Gurudev explained 12 is standing for Radhika, 12 is Krishna, and the half is the kinkaris the maidservants so just uh, try to feel it with me for one minute how the you gala kishore are playful and they have taken shelter of their friends because the friends are doing all the arrangements they are helping them to meet and they helping them to overcome the obstacles and they helping them to express their feelings to each other and they helping them to come to higher and higher levels of love that is expressed here in one sentence unmadani rai madan radha that is a chapter comes about man here. One day Sri Radhika is going out alone to meet Krishna with merely anurag or deep passionate attachment to Krishna as her duty, a girl messenger. But when she comes to the gate of the Kunj, where Krishna is waiting for her, she suddenly faints vortäuschen. She suddenly faints shyness and unwillingness and asks her Dutika, why have you brought me here? So Gurudev explained also 
that when Radhika is experiencing her feeling of Bhav, anger or madness or how do you say that man in Sanskrit that is a service to Mohan also she is creating waves because he is eager to meet her he is eager to embrace her and finally they made it in the deep night to meet and then Radhika becomes you know in this mood or gets into this mood of why have you brought me here to her girl messenger and it's also interesting that Baba says she finds shyness she faints that means she she kind of like plays this unwillingness but why she's playing to increase the feelings of Mohan even then she tries to satisfy Shyam by making him relish the Vamya Bha the flavor of opposition. Sham and the Sakis are very eager for her to give up this opposition, but nothing helps. The ocean of Krishna's eagerness increases and everyone feels great heartache so Vrindavan this comes also now all the uh, inhabitants of Vrindavan and all the Sakis and all Mohan and all the trees and the flowers and the clouds all they feel a heartache because all of them exist to bring Radha and Krishna together but no now they see all of them from their own position they feel that maybe it's not taking place today maybe they are not meeting because now Swamini gets in an opposition to, to Mohan maybe she wants to run away and they feel it in the hearts they feel this pain in the hearts but for Krishna, his eagerness increases, no? And the others are like, oh my God, what's going down? And Krishna is like getting mad. His waves, the waves of Swamini's feelings or moods are making him very eager. And Vrindavan thinks, personified Vrindavan thinks, let me once see what I can do. It is the Vasha Hasha Van. They are in this forest in the blissful rainy season. And clouds are calling in the sky with deep rumbling voices, making Swamini fearfully and tightly embrace the Lord of her life. So we can also feel how Vrindavan as a person or the, all the creatures of Vrindavan they are helping Radha and Mohan to meet so Vrindavan creates this thunder this rain all what happens in Vrindavan is to assist their meetings that they can come together and isn't that a beautiful meditation Vrindavan thinks, let me once see what I can do. And coincidentally, also, we have a Vasha Harsha Leela here since two days. It's raining out of buckets. No? So we could all feel this this morning. We were reading it this morning. How the rain also gives a chance to us to be more uh, eager <laughs> come to Gurudev's room although we are walking through the water high meals uh, it's also like meditation how the manjis they are following Swamini in the muddy rain road like this we try to always combine it with the feeling of uh, 
our meditations, how to be a Dasi here and how to follow Swamini like a shadow. So what happens? Rindavan suddenly creates a monsoon forest with its Leela Shakti and clouds are calling in the sky with deep rumbling voices making Swamini fearfully and tightly embrace the Lord of her life. The Sakis say, blessed you are, friend the cloud. Today you were more clever than all the Sakis together. In this way, even the clouds of Vrindavan are blessed with the devotional service of the Sri Yugala. So isn't it nice that even the clouds are serving? They are giving the thunder, they are making the monsoon cloud, and then comes the lightning. It will all be very, uh, very, very uh, frightening for Swamini, and she needs to <laughs> hold on to <laughs> Krishna. Like this, we understand that every situation in Vrindavan is there to help. And we, like a human coming to Boma Vrindavan, we also try to take any situation that happens to us here like a help. No? We try to focus, we try to take shelter, we try to be more eager. All these little things as little human beings, but to always see the positive to see the help and to feel the help in any moment that is our daily uh, sadhana in Vrindavan and so when the, the clouds are calling in the sky with deep rumbling voices making Swamini fearfully and tightly embrace the Lord of her life the Sakis say Blessed are you, friend the cloud. Today you were even more clever than all the suckies together. Anyone wants to comment on this and share on this? So under all, all circumstances, we can be happy to be in Vrindavan. If the sun is shining or the <clears throat> it's raining, all this is, uh, is uh, helping in the meditation of our uh, mood. All is fortunate. So, we can be happy that this much of life is there in the Munga Mandya. So many different things happen there every moment. And uh, the main, main thing is that this is helping to us to enter this <clears throat> one-pointed mood. For this is uh, the Munga Mani is, uh, is famous. <clears throat> Even we know that also others who are really in the relationship, Gurudev will also support. When he know that there is a relationship, even to Ramachandra, or there is a motherly love, he will always support this mood. But the main mood in Munga Mandi is really this Manjari Bhav mood. 
Okay, let's finish. Huh? I see you are busy. No, no, we are just now before we we take the darshan of Gurudev and then we we are busy listening to you. <laughs> we just want your darshan, Gurudev. Do you have any questions for Gurudev? Now it's a little down, my yeah. Yeah, that. Yeah. 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 Radhe Radhe, you can hear? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Radhe. So nice. How was the uh, program of uh, Vaishnava Path? Sundaram. How was the program by some parts? Beautiful Guru Dev, by your mercy, we meet a great soul. We are so fortunate. But they are that talking about Radha Rani and uh, Mah Mahaprabhu. He is Krishna or Radha? <laughs> Both. <laughs> he say that Krishna is the Supreme Lord, is the Creator, is the greatest personality, but near Radharani is very small. <laughs> <laughs> He is so little, Mia Radharani. So he is a great person. My Radharani is a great person. That Krishna is a very small little friend of Radharani. Right? Him this energy of Krishna. She is the energy of Krishna. If you know Krishna, and you don't know energy means you don't know Krishna. <laughs> energy is Radha. Take care. Radha. Today I have some same Seva Seva. <laughs>